Now, ladies and gentlemen, the name is Trinder. T R I N D E R, pronounced Chumley. And I'm going to sing to you. Ha <laughs> you, you lucky people. people. <laughs> Would all the orchestra stand up a minute, please, if you don't mind? I've lost a pair of trousers out of my room. <laughs> You know, it's grand being here. There's something about this town that gets you. As I came into the town, I went like that, and my right lung said to my left lung, <laughs> that's the stuff I was telling you about. <laughs> I was coming here in my car. <laughs> He's got a car. Do you want any petrol? <laughs> Out stepped a home guard. He said, halt. I said, who goes there? He said, don't be silly. I've got to say that. <laughs> Don't look at the programme, sir. The name's Trinder. <laughs> Gentleman doesn't believe I'm Tommy Trinder. If I'm not Tommy Trinder, I'm having a hell of a time with his wife. <laughs> I've, I've got a brother in the army, and I've had my medical, <laughs> E5. My, my brother in the army applied for leave the other week on compassionate ground. <coughs> Commanding officer, well, what's wrong? He said, well, my wife's going to have a baby. He got his leave. When he returned, the officer said, well, was it a boy or a girl? He said, don't be silly, it takes months. <laughs> the life of the party. <laughs> I think it's electricity in my body that gets me this way. When I was a baby, I had so much electricity in my body that I had to put a rubber sheet in the bed. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying, there's no future in this business. <laughs> you work hard, you get top of the bill, you get your name in lights, and <laughs> then comes the blackout. <laughs> Flying along in my car, trying to find this town without signposts. I said to a fellow, where does this road lead to? He says, here, Dal, Dal. I said, where does that road lead to? He said, Dal, Dal. I said, what's the name of this place? He said, Dal, Dal. I said, you're not very intelligent, are you? He said, no, but I'm not lost. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Brown came home on seven days leave to see his wife and kids. Got special leave for doing a thing I wouldn't have done for quids. When he got home, the kids went wild, it nearly turned Bill's head. He took off his boots, dropped in a chair, looked at his wife and said, Send the kids to the pictures, dear, I've something to say to you. She said, something to say to me, who said something to say to you? She said, don't tell me later, Bill, perhaps tomorrow will do. He said, tomorrow never comes, I'm nothing to say to you. She sent the kids to the picture, said, now what have you got to say? Oh, tell me now that you have got the chance. He said, it's like this here, it's been worrying me, my dear. How'd you go on for bacon love while I was out in France? <laughs> go on, go on, make something out of it, make something out of it. I tell you, the time I was caught in the wife, I used to call her my pilgrim. <laughs> Every time I took her out, I made more progress. Well, <laughs> I used to take her riding at night in my car. She thought, she thought I was a surgeon. She kept saying, cut it out, cut it out. <laughs> I gave her a nice family. Her father was a gentleman farmer. He used to milk cows with gloves on. Well, <laughs> don't bother with the small jokes. Well, he was dead unlucky. He bought a prize bull, a thousand guineas. Put it in the field and he fell in love with the cow in the next field. Jumped a barbed wire fence. It didn't jump high enough. He sold it for a tenner. <laughs> Oh, what's the good of a bull with a broken leg? <laughs> and her young brother, nice young fellow, but he had an old face. His mother was frightened by antique furniture. <laughs> we used to call him Rosie. Ooh. Had a job as a lorry driver. He got the sack. Every time he came to traffic signals, they turned lavender. <laughs> he joined the Air Force. First day on parade, he walks on like this. <laughs> he was on reconnaissance. <laughs> I became the sergeant, looked at him, said, could you kill a German? He said, <laughs> in time. <laughs> they, they sent him out to bomb the Kiel Canal. When he came back, his commanding officer said, well, did you drop your bombs? He said, <laughs> didn't take bombs. <laughs> I'm only acting. <laughs> he said, I took a bucket of water. He said, I flew out the Kiel Canal, see? And I saw the battleship, so I swooped down, <laughs> out with me back of the wall, sir, and I poured it down the funnel. <laughs> out came the captain, was he mad? <laughs> he said, what do you think you're doing? Rosie said, I've put your fire out, now light it. 
because I used to be a female impersonator until <laughs> a sailor chased me up an alley. <laughs> After the wedding with Pilgrim, we went on our honeymoon. After the wedding, she wanted to see the world, so we went to Blackpool. We, uh, we got to the station, and the woman kept looking at me side-faced. Have you ever seen me side-faced? Look. <laughs> she said, excuse me, didn't I back you at Newmarket? <laughs> I also sing. I had my voice trained in Italy. After my voice was trained, I sang in front of the King of Italy. He was so pleased, he took me for a ride with him, all through Rome, in an open carriage. There we were, driving through High Street, Rome, in an open carriage with the King of Italy and myself. Who should pass but Mussolini and Ciano? Mussolini turned to Ciano and said to say, who's that guy riding with Trinda? <laughs> Staying in a beautiful hotel, very modern. They had hot and cold women running in all the rooms. <laughs> Air conditioned, the manager used to blow through the keyhole every quarter of an hour. <laughs> I said, what do you charge for your rooms? The manager said, well, a room with a bath is a guinea a night. You have a room with a wash basin, 15 shillings. I had a cupboard with a damp sponge, ninepence. <laughs> they changed the sheets on the bed every day, took them off one bed and put them on another. The manager showed me my bed. He said, Dick Turpin slept in that. The way it went down in the middle, I think his horse must have slept with him. <laughs> Staying there, we had a major, retired. Had his young lady with him, 18. She was waiting to retire. <laughs> Don't laugh in the wrong places, please. It makes the joke sound dirty. <laughs> she was crying her eyes out. Said the Major, I've heard about these weekends in Blackpool. I hope nothing happens to me this weekend. If anything happens, I'll, I'll drown myself. The Major said, oh, that's damn decent of you. <laughs> said the wife, now we're at Blackpool, let's go to the dogs. We went to the dogs, I backed the dog, the race started. My dog started walking. I said, run. The dog said, what? I said, run. He said, not me, I'm an evacuee. <laughs> We went for a trip on the boat. There was a man looking out to sea. He said to his young lady, look here, there's the Queen Mary. There's the Aquitania. Over came a fellow who said, excuse me, uh, where's the cloakroom? He said, how many funnels has it got? <laughs> so my daddy went to the steward. He said, steward, where's the cloakroom? The steward said, port side. He said, good heavens, I can't wait that long. <laughs> Better get back to report for ARP duty. You see, I'm in the ARP. I shall never forget the first warning. Was I scared? <laughs> Only me and my laundry man will ever know how scared I was. <laughs> well, he's the only man I told you. Don't go around telling everybody got the wind up. <laughs> I reported for duty now. Hit warden says, all right, go home. Sleep on England. We're watching. <laughs> I went home. There was a wife dressed up, fur coat on. I said, you going out? She said, oh, no, just keeping the moth out the clothes. <laughs> The phone rang, I answered it. Somebody thought I was working for the Admiralty. They said, is the coast clear? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I recite as well, yes. I have a recitation here adapted from the early English. It was originally written by Edgar Allan Chambers. And... Uh, <laughs> uh, please. <laughs> if it hurts, loosen something. A recitation. It was Christmas Day in the barracks. The soldiers went hungry to bed. They had no Christmas pudding. Who the sergeant had done what they said. <laughs> now, I want to sing you a song from a film I made some time ago. Music maestro, please. <laughs> Once I met a pair of lovers strolling on their way. He was moony. She was spoony, <laughs> and I heard him say, it's long time till this evening, waiting for a spoon. Gee, oh gosh, I could eat ya, I want to meet ya, it's not a noon. It's long time till this evening, waiting for the moon. Gee, oh gosh, I could eat ya, I want to meet ya, it's not a new. Tell you straight, I can't wait till the night is done. Can't we spoon, it's not a new. Behind the road, the dendrons in the park. It's long time till this evening, my brain very soon. 
gee, oh gosh, not evening, not evening, start a new. Now then, all you happy couples, married ones as well, <laughs> just to show your happy lovers, let me hear you yell. It's long time till evening, waiting for a spoon. Gee, oh gosh, I can eat ya, I want to meet ya, start a new. Long time till evening, waiting for the moon. Gee, oh gosh, I shall miss ya. I want to kiss ya. Tell you straight, I can't wait till the night is done. Can't we spoon? Start a new behind the rhododendrons in the park. My brain very soon Gee, oh gosh, not seeming, not seeming